Hello, my friends, and welcome again to the Parish of St. Anne. My name is Father John Byers, and I serve as a priest and pastor here. And it's so wonderful to be with you for another video. As you might recall, for the past few weeks, we've been having some videos talking a little bit about the theology and faith of the Anglican Church, and particularly related to liturgy and sacraments. In the past two weeks, I was talking about baptism, Eucharist, which, as I said before, those serve as the two primary sacraments within the life of Anglican Christians. Uh, I use that fancy term talking about them being the dominical sacraments or sacraments of our Lord. And as I shared before, we believe those are the sacraments, as we hear from Scripture, that Jesus explicitly commends. But I've also mentioned that over centuries, there's been many, many other things considered sacraments. And in fact, all things, and this weekend I'm going to be talking about this, our whole theological system is under understanding that the whole world in some sense is sacramental. Everything conveys the presence of God, of course, to varying degrees. And this week I'm going to be talking about the church and how the church building itself is a sacramental. But before I say more, I want to talk a little bit this week about start now talking about some of the other sacraments. As you know, Anglicans are very much similar to Roman Catholics and Orthodox in that we do believe that in seven sacraments, or we hold seven sacraments. Uh, so we have the two, but then we have five others that while we consider sacramental, we wouldn't necessarily say are explicitly taught by Jesus himself. That can be debated. <laughs> in fact, sometimes Roman Catholics will argue otherwise. But for our sake and for our purposes, I think it's helpful to review them and talk a little bit about what they are. And so this week I'm going to talk about the sacrament of confirmation. Now you might wonder why I talk about confirmation right after baptism, Eucharist. Well, historically, and throughout the church's history, even to today, many Christian churches understand baptism, confirmation, and Holy Eucharist as the sacraments of initiation. They are the sacraments by which you and I become members of Christ's body, the church, that we become another Christ in the world. And that every time we receive baptism, our identity as Christ is deepened and strengthened. Now, in the early church, baptism was, interesting enough, uh, celebrated by the bishop himself. And would, the bishop would be assisted by deacons and deaconesses. We do have some evidence that there were women deacons in the early church. And the reason for that is when one was baptized at that time, one was often baptized naked. And so the men would be baptized alone and then women would be baptized. But the bishop was always the one who conferred the sacrament of baptism at that time. It wasn't until a little bit later in church's history that priests began to celebrate baptism, at least in the West. And in the Western Christian Church, what had occurred, as soon as the church grew and got larger, it became much more difficult for the bishop to baptize every child or to be present with everyone. So priests slowly took on the ministry of bishop in baptizing and a child. Now, there became a concern because we understand, even to this day, that the bishop is the chief pastor of the local church. And so even I, as a priest, I only function by the grace of the bishop, that my ministry is the ministry of the bishop. I do as the bishop instructs me to do. But they wanted the bishop to actually be able to come to churches with greater regularity. And there developed this practice, the sacrament of confirmation. And confirmation is one of those sacraments I heard a Roman Catholic writer one time say, and I think rightly so, that, sac that confirmation is a sacrament without a theology. But what has often been placed is that confirmation is a sacrament in which you and I are strengthened by the Holy Spirit. We receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now that's slightly problematic because when you are baptized, you do receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we have a lingering hint of the time when confirmation was very much a part of the sacrament of baptism. And that if you go to a baptism today in the Anglican Church and the Roman Catholic Church, you will notice that the priest will anoint the child or the adult 
and will confirm them and tell them to receive of the Spirit. This, again, is a, a piece of that celebration that is a hangover from the time when the bishop used to do it. But as the bishop no longer celebrated, the bishop would come back to churches to do that act, to anoint and confirm the Christians of a parish. And so typically, in many places, either once a year or maybe even once two or three years, the bishop would come to a parish and would confirm all those persons that were baptized during that period of time, confirm them in the faith. He would give them the Holy Spirit. And so day to day, that still continues actually in the Anglican Church at least, in the Anglican Church only a bishop may actually confirm. And so like in our diocese, if a person wishes to be confirmed, either the bishop comes to visit the parish or that person goes to a ceremony at the cathedral. And again, we understand that confirmation is the sacrament by which one receives the Holy Spirit, is strengthened with it, fortified with the Spirit, so as to live the faith. And during the ceremony, a person being confirmed will kneel before the bishop, and the bishop will anoint them and confirm them and seal them with the sacrament. So the sacrament of confirmation is all about the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church. And it strengthens us. Now, one final point here. At least in the Anglican Church of Canada, one doesn't actually have to be confirmed. We believe that you are a full member of the body of Christ upon reception of baptism. The only ones that are ever expected to be confirmed are those of us who go ahead for holy orders, for for deacon, priest, and bishop. Otherwise, most Christians aren't called to. You're invited to, you're welcome to receive confirmation. And if you're ever interested, you can always talk to me and I can arrange a time for you to be confirmed by a bishop. But generally speaking, we don't actually believe it's absolutely necessary for you in your life. And we'll get into that more even with some of these other sacraments. The sacraments I'm going to talk about now aren't those that are what we believe to be absolutely essential to the life of every Christian, but rather sacraments that deepen our relationship and our identity as another Christ. My friends, as always, I welcome, to, welcome you to St. Anne's uh, to join us on Sundays for Holy Eucharist at 1030 and to check our website to see the many other events and activities that we have going on and to know that we are here for you, that if there's ever anything you need, you can always talk to us. May God bless you, may God keep you, and may God let his face shine upon you always. Take care, and God bless.